Welcome back everyone for another episode of the Victoria Magazine. And today we get to look at July 1990. So we are into the early 90s. A summer afternoon. Beautiful ways to refresh your spirit and favorite things to do by the sea. I've missed looking at these. It's been a couple days. And for those of you who love to follow along at looking at these magazines, I post a new magazine every other day. So every other day we'll have a new magazine out until we get caught up and probably will take us about a year to do that. I think I haven't done the official math yet. Oh, here we go. I love the blues and the whites of July. Look at that. Can you imagine just walking up those stairs, sitting right here at the porch? Look at how elegant and gorgeous this is, the white umbrella. They wore such beautiful designs. And now we just wear jeans and a t-shirt and we're good to go. I love this. The simplicity. I love this. And I don't know if you watched the apron episode. I did post that showing all of the vintage aprons that I got for $1, which is amazing. That would look so cute over this style. I have to keep an eye out for a dress like this because that'd be so cute to wear with the aprons. Oh my gosh, look how inviting. Can you see that? Look at the little seashells on the wall. You have your gorgeous basket, your cozy blanket, your little sweater knit. Look at that. Oh my gosh, can you imagine living here? And this, I actually have this. I was able to purchase this from a little thrift store and it is a little bit worn and beat up. I was thinking about maybe converting it to a basket that will sit on my bike. I think that'd be so cute. And off to the forest I'll go collecting wildflowers. I love that, the bushes. I love that. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so jealous of those who have flowers in your garden. If you have flowers in your garden, you are very lucky. Consider yourself very blessed. All the deer here will eat the flowers, so I do not have a garden. I love those hair clips. Look at those. So gorgeous. And the colors. I always love these little collage these little collections and there's so many beautiful things to look at your fan look at the little makeup and the little rosettes i love that there's my beautiful wildflowers oh i like looking at these okay renaissance buttons and this is Andrea Stiff, I think. Marla McNally. I love the E on that. That's really cute. And this is Little Red Riding Hood Baskets. Oh my gosh, look at these lockets. <gasps> Those are so cute. Look at the, the background. The little etching, little lace on there. And your C. Oh, Love that I do miss the ocean. I come from Oregon and we were about an hour and a half or even an hour and 15 minutes away from the Oregon coast. And in Montana, there is no Oregon coast. There is no coast. Look at that. I love the contrast of that with this. But I do love all the lakes and the water they have here, which is so beautiful. And the forests. I wouldn't trade that for anything. I love the flower prints. Look at that beautiful shell that swirls around. And mysteriously beautiful. Almost looks like the moor. Oh, it's an island surrounded by oceans of solitude. Oh my gosh. Okay, have you ever thought about living on an island? And actually being out here. So I can't even imagine 
being that isolated. Now, I do love to be alone, and I love my meandering walks through the forest. I love going to the little local island that we have here, but I can't even imagine being surrounded by water and isolated like that. I suppose it would be lovely to go and visit. Oh my goodness, look at those gorgeous flower gardens. Across the little garden comes the breeze, bows all its cups of flame, and brings to me its breath of minion net, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, and bright sweet peas with drowsy murmurs from the encircling sea. Celia Thaxter. Did she write that? Then she must have written that. Oh my goodness. Okay, look at this. In 1835, Celia's father became the light keeper of Tiny White Island in the Isles of Shoals. Opposite top and previous pages, so right here. And his daughter grew up a stone's throw from the sea with enough loneliness to last a lifetime. Oh. She grew up there alone. Oh my goodness. So she found happiness in her little garden. Oh, I love old books so much. Look at the colors. I just love those muted shades. Driftweed Poems by Celia. Oh, she became a poet. Okay. Here, yeah, stories and poems for children. The poems of Celia Thaxter. Child Life in Pro. So she probably, and that was somebody else that wrote it, but she probably spent a large time of her childhood in stories and imagination. There's a beautiful pansies. From the easels of Victorian ladies. Beautiful colors. Adorned with pansies. So this is keeping the theme of the pansies. Look at those little cups, those little cakes. Those are stunning. I love this color palette, it's very muted. You know what's neat about this basket here is that the, the flowers are just kind of spraying out as if she had just gathered them from the meadow, see how there's nothing like, usually with a flower arrangement, you would have it pop up and around, but here is just layered nicely and it shows the little handle. I think that's neat. Oh, here's my green that I love so much. Beautiful embroidered pillows. By the sea. Look at her gorgeous skirt right there and her little flower on her waist. Oh my goodness, these colors are so gorgeous. Look at that. I love the soft pastels. I think they're such a lovely shade. They're so soothing to look at. I love the print, a vintage little print right there. So lovely. It's the umbrella. I love that. It's gorgeous. Just lovely, lovely color palettes. I just love the palettes. Just the soft lavender with the red tones. And then you have your greens and blues. I love how they did that. Doesn't that look so welcoming right there? You can just sit here and relax. Which chair would you choose? I would probably choose this one in the sun. The view from a porch. I love, look how cottagey this is here with your ferns growing everywhere, even in the plant, your ivy trailing down. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at the green trim. You don't often see that color being used. And all of your lovely flower baskets. I suppose once we get our house here finished, we can put up the flower baskets. They're, they are high enough that the deer won't grab them. 
A lovely lavender, a taste for violets. Oh, those shades are so gorgeous. Just the lovely soft tones. And here we found the cover photo. And there it is. I kind of do that with every episode. We check the cover photo. If you have been enjoying these magazines or this reading with me, please make sure that you like and subscribe. I do post a new episode every other day. Like I was saying, look at that. It's so gorgeous. And then your vintage lace. Oh, the swan, so gorgeous. There are your lovely flowers with the lace, and there's your table. Look at all the little plates. And here, okay, so here's the little hats I wrote on it. I'm so glad I wrote on it. So this inspired me. I thought these hats were amazing. And I wanted to create a fairy collection. I was doing my sculpting at the time, or I had ideas for sculpting in one particular fairy group. Uh, loved hats in my little stories that I wrote. So those were a good inspiration for hats. And I think they're so cute. Rumble seats and white walls. Oh my. Look at the gathering. Look at those beautiful outfits. Somehow, wrote Fitzgerald's daughter in 1959, there must have been 48 hours a day in that golden era. What is this? The summer house. Okay. Those look amazing. Your little grooming elements. Look at that bed. I could just dive right into that. Look how cozy. And the color palette. I love these green tones. All of the picture frames. And your leaded glass. I'm pretty sure that looks like lead, leaded glass. More of a heavier glass. Look at those photos on the wall. Coming home to Shady Side. There's something about Pittsburgh people. They never let you go, says Sandy. Beautiful. Look at the tree in there. I love this. Oh, it's so gorgeous. The white and green. Well, the little rustic look going on here with your painted chairs. Your blue dishes. I love those. Oh, look at that cake. Oh my goodness. So yummy. I wanted to make a cake last night, a banana cake, and decorate it up, but I need to finish my dress that I'm working on before I start doing cake decorating again. I did bake one cake, and it turned out so delicious. Oh my goodness, it was like the best thing ever. It was more like a strawberry shortcake type of cake with whipped cream frosting. It was so yummy. Look at that pie. I can't wait to start making pies. I need to make pies when I return from Vegas. Oh, that looks so lusciously good. What is this? Raspberry hazelnut meringue. Oh my goodness, I need to recreate this. Maybe there'll be a recipe. Oh, so yummy. Look at that gorgeous. Oh, that's so beautiful, that layout, the little setting. I do have a table. I wonder if I could recreate this or something similar. We don't have chairs. We do have a stone bench literally made from a rock. So technically it would be considered a stone bench. It's quite long enough to fit about three people across. Um, it's just a big boulder because here in Montana, there's a billion boulders. Oh my goodness, look at this. So fun. But the table, the previous owners left a garden table. And I bet I could bring that outside and decorate it nicely and set it and then have the girls come out and join me. I would love to do that. And what is this? Is that a little secret garden? Stop it. What is behind this? A little like shed or chapel back there? 
Oh my goodness. I need a secret garden. I need one of those. Maybe someday. Okay, recipes. Taste for violets, violet infusion, violet syrup. Um, a love affair with wild raspberries. Okay, do they have the certain, oh, right here, raspberry hazelnut meringue. Okay, eight egg whites, a pinch of cream of tartar, which I do not have. I need to purchase cream of tartar. Two sp teaspoons of white vinegar. I don't think I have that either. Sugar, hazelnuts, almond liqueur, the fruit cream filling. Oh, what is in there? That's where they got the delicious cream filling. I'm just going to have to take you back. I need a second look. Okay, so that's what it is. So you have your cake, and then you have your cream filling with your strawberries. No strawberries. Raspberries blackberries oh my goodness that sounds amazing I think I could probably make that here's your fun croquet we found a vintage set of croquet at the local thrift store for like what did we pay I think eight dollars for this set the view oh someday someday I will have a view like that all of the raspberry lavender whipped cream. Have you ever had lavender whipped cream? I haven't. Oh my goodness. I just, I just, every time I see the Victorian architecture, I just cannot get over that people live like this. If you take the time to study the Victorian architecture and the intricate designs of every little they took so much time to make it beautiful it was all about beautifying everything and even the most tiniest of things were engraved or engraved and i was watching a show and i came across they had a shot of the door frame and they zoomed into the door hinge even the hinges on the inside of the door were engraved with this beautiful full like floral design and I'm like who looks at the door hinges the inside of the door not the outside the inside the part that closes shut I just could not believe it blown away it was so beautiful look at that gorgeous painting but I love I love their love of beauty the Victorian era was such a beautiful era and here we have oh we made it to our advertisements what was your favorite thing that you saw? I really love the hats, the raspberry cake kind of inspired me. I I love the color palette. The beach scenes kind of made me nostalgic for home. And there you have your Victorian plants. The thinking tree. We spent a lot of summer days up in that tree, my friend Danny Grove and I. It's been 25 years since then. And though the summers on Maple Island, Michigan, now seem to run together, I can still remember the exhilaration of sitting hidden in the leafy branches of the tree we used to call the thinking tree. I too used to love climbing trees. There's something about being up there and feeling the rocking movement and feeling the embrace of the tree. You feel so safe. Even though you are high, it's just such a lovely, safe feeling. All right, so this is it. Join me next time for August. And as we head away from spring, summer, more into the cooler winter, we'll experience the heat of August. And after that, we'll move on to September. So goodbye for now and until next time.